the beard is gone, the hair is gone, the coffee on a Tuesday is right here. Blood night. So maybe you heard this story in the news recently. The UN Population Fund says the world is about to add its seven billionth person. The UN says the world's population will reach a milestone this Monday. Seven billion people. The world's population will hit seven billion. Seven billion. Seven billion. Come Halloween, there will be so many of us on Earth that it's actually kind of scary. It appears that the good old human race is now seven billion strong. That's nine zeros. 133 times around the world counted in steps. 200 years to count aloud starting from one, two, three, four. Seven billion. <laughs> I did it! So, most of what I write is science fiction. And the reason I love sci-fi is because I believe that talking about our future is the best way today to talk about our present, whereas in the past, the best way to talk about our present was to talk about our past. Uh, Put it this way. With the rate of technological evolution being so fast, our actions today directly implicate the situation tomorrow. The present is so close to our future that it's like the shingles on the roof of the house. Years, days, moments, almost overlap each other. Science fiction can explore this intimate relationship. Anywhere from the gutter to the very top, all the time warning that if the structure isn't sound, the roof will collapse. When I tell people I write sci-fi, I get the same question again and again. What happens when there are too many people? What happens when the world becomes overpopulated? Well, it's a good question and one I tried to address in my first long fiction, a novella called Big City. I put the link to that whole book online for your pleasure. You can find it in the doobly-doo. But let's return to the idea of population growth. If you want to know anything about this subject, you have to start with Thomas Malthus and his book, An Essay on the Principle of Population. It was Malthus's idea that humans are the only animal on Earth that increases its population beyond its available resources. Basically, we grow faster than we create food. It leaves us with a whole hell of a lot of people who are underfed and malnourished. According to Malthus, humanity grows exponentially. Nothing, not even the plague or two world wars, can put so much as a blip in that graph. In the year 1800, we were one billion strong. 200 years later, and we're seven billion. Obviously, we can't keep growing forever, so eventually we're gonna hit an asymptote and level out. But scientists have a very hard time agreeing on what that number will be. Guesses range from 10 billion to 20 billion. Here's what we do know. During the agricultural and industrial revolutions, the life expectancy of children increased Dramatic. Between 1730 and 1810, the percentage of children who died before the age of five decreased from 74.5 to 31.8. Advances in medicine like compulsory vaccination have increased the life expectancy from 38 in 1850 to 78 in 2011. The world population growth rate hit its peak during the 1960s baby boom at just over 2%. Ridiculously high. Some people started to freak out. Like Paul Elrich, who predicted in his 1968 book, The Population Bomb, that we were headed for severe famines worldwide. Fortunately, Ehrlich was wrong. Innovation stepped in and saved the day. And in this case, innovation's name was Norman Burlock. More than half the farmers of the world live in a subsistence agriculture outside of the economies of their own country. They have had very little or no money with which to make purchases of the many items that you need for a decent life. Borlaug is the father of the Green Revolution. Initiatives to develop higher yield crops using synthetic fertilizers and hybridized seeds. The Nobel Committee estimated that in 1970, by the time he received the prize, he had saved a billion lives. Don't you just feel like shit? In his acceptance speech, he said, there can be no permanent progress in the battle against hunger until the agencies that fight for increased food production and those that fight for population control unite in a common effort. It's true that the growth rate has been falling ever since the baby boom, and chances are it won't reach that rate ever again. But consider this diagram. While birth rates in the developed world decrease and level out around 1.7 children per woman, in Sub-Saharan Africa, the rate remains at five or more. Or take a look at the distribution of ages in the developed and undeveloped world. Look at how many children there are in the latter. Sub-Saharan Africa is also where we see the most poverty and malnourishment. Clearly there is a connection between fertility rate and quality of living. It tells us that a large part of the problem concerning population growth can be addressed by the empowerment of women. That's Joel Cohen, a mathematical biologist and author of Educating All Children, A Global Agenda. He's saying that not only is nutrition a vital part of balancing population growth and hunger, but also the use of contraception and most importantly, education. You can find the link to his Amazon page in the doobly-doo. I want to make one final point on population growth 
and I'll have Malthus help me out again. I believe that it is the intention of the Creator that Earth should be replenished, but certainly with a healthy, virtuous, and happy population, not an unhealthy, vicious, and miserable one. And if, in endeavoring to obey the command to increase and multiply, we people it only with beings of this latter description and suffer accordingly, we have no right to impeach the justice of the command, but only our rational mode of executing. The justice of the command. Here he's talking about God's just desire for us to multiply and grow. Of course, that's fooey. There is no God. But there's no question that as a species, and like every other species on Earth, we have the innate desire to procreate. Part of it is evolutionary, but the question must be, is all of it evolution? Do you want to have kids because you want to ensure the future survival of the human race? Or do you want them for other reasons? Social reasons, because it's strange not to. Or personal reasons, because you crave a specific kind of love, because you want to be needed. Even secret reasons, secret to yourself, because you know that you will die and there's no escaping it. And one way to ease the pain of that is to know that someone will remember you and tell about you. And in that, you achieve a kind of immortality. Humanity can outgrow its evolutionary instructions. By the time you die, how many times do you think you'll have had sex to procreate, and how many times just for pleasure? Advances in medicine will allow us to live longer, just as we jumped from 38 to 78 in 150 years. Advances in technology will not only allow our world to be energy independent, but ourselves. Imagine getting all the sustenance you need from the sun. Imagine living to the age of 200 when you'll really be able to count to 7 billion. Maybe it seems out there to you, but evolution like population is exponential. And when we can live as long as we want, what will happen to our desire to procreate, to have children? There is no easy way to answer this question, but I do my best to try in a second long fiction, a novel called All Languages the Rose, coming soon.